So help me if three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri wins Best Picture over this and Get Out, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'll complain, I suppose. The Shape of Water, the latest film by Guillermo del Toro, currently nominated for a whole bunch of Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, Best Supporting Actor, and having now seen it, deserving each and every one of those nominations. I thought this movie was absolutely phenomenal. I thought it was beautiful and touching and poetic and just gorgeous. I mean, visually gorgeous. You should expect that from a Guillermo del Toro movie, but emotionally gorgeous as well. This, this was just a masterfully put together film. I, d I don't know if I'm prepared to say this definitively, um, but it might be my favorite Guillermo del Toro film. That's not me saying it's his best film. I do make a distinction between personal favorite and best. I think certainly Pan's Labyrinth is the purest representation of him and his mindset and the things that intrigue him put on film. But I think for me, this this might be this might be my favorite thing he's ever done. So I, I, I'm not gonna get into spoilers on this because I know it's it's only started to get beyond limited release. So I know that there's a pretty good chance a lot of people haven't seen it, but things I can safely tell you about the premise. It's a period piece, it's set in the 50s in the US and it deals with this woman who is mute. She's not deaf, she's mute. And she is a cleaner at a government facility and she's been there a while and they just they do research on various things um and that's played by sally hawkins um and she has a f friend at work played by octavia spencer she has a neighbor um down who lives down the hall from her from her apartment played by uh, richard jenkins who's basically though these are her two friends in the world and they bring in what they call a new asset into the facility which is effectively a modern update of the Gill Man from uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's pretty much what it is. Played by the always amazing Doug Jones. I mean, there's a reason that they put him in basically any creature that is not supposed to be big and muscular basically always gets played by Doug Jones because he's really good at this sort of stuff. Um, and it's a it's a gorgeous, stunning design on the on the creature. Um, I mean, that's not a spoiler to get into, I, I, but it, it really is, it's beautiful. And then it just follows the bond that forms between this woman who can't speak and this creature that most of the people in the facility um, do not regard as human. And there is naturally, there's an antagonistic character, um, the head of security um, played by Michael Shannon. There is uh, one of the scientists on site who kind of has an interesting role to play uh, in all this. And, and actually, I really like his story and, and how that all pans out. I can't go into more than that without um, getting to spoilers for stuff that happens later on, but I, I really, I really loved his story and I loved his angle. And it, and it is just the bonding of those two characters and then the consequences that happened as a result of that. And it is, it really is beautiful. There's a very, for lack of a better term, there's, there's a very French vibe to it. I think part of it is, the way the camera moves, I think part of it's the music choice, um, but it it has that sort of slow pan from tableau to tableau. Like, let's linger on this image. Let's let this you know this you know sort of European-y period music play, and um, it's very it's very deliberate. It's it's not. I don't think it's slow. Um, but it takes its time. It lets moments settle, um, which I think is a big part of why it, it, I found it to be as powerful as it is. And all the performances are great. Um, you know, Octavia Spencer is basically Octavia Spencer. She plays what she pretty much always plays, and, and you know, it, you get what it says on the box, but she's really good in this part. She's a good, she's a good fit for it. She works really well. She's got great chemistry with Sally Hawkins. Sally Hawkins, I don't know her from anything else, or if I've seen her anything else, I've never noticed her before. She's amazing because what she has to convey 
as an actress without the benefit of her voice and how effortlessly she does it, how well we as the audience can see her thought process and understand her emotions without a word said by her. It's an amazing, amazing performance. And Richard Jenkins, I, I have loved Richard Jenkins since I first saw him in Six Feet Under and he is wonderful and warm and loving and I, again, another great, wonderful friend character. Some of the other things, that, like how well this movie works, again, it's hard for me to, to I gotta talk in vagaries here, but there's two scenes that happen. One about, three quarters of the way in and one towards the very end um, that on paper should have lost me, should have completely lost me these moments, um, but they didn't. And I, and I was sitting there even as I was watching it and buying it and like, yes, and something in the back of my brain was going, I shouldn't be buying into this, but I don't care. And like that, again, just speaks to the strength of the execution of this movie. Um, it's not perfect. Um, there is basically one weak link in this, and that is Michael Shannon. Not his um, portrayal of the character. He's actually very well cast for the type of role he's playing. He's a good fit. He plays the part well. Um, it's more to do with we get, we get extra time with him as a character that I don't think benefits anything. Because pretty much as soon as he shows up, you get that he is, he's gonna be the problem. He's, he is effectively the bad guy for this story. We get these extra scenes of like, him at a car dealership, him with his family, him with his wife. And normally I would say if you're gonna have those extra scenes, they should be giving more depth to the character so we understand them better. And maybe that was the idea. But the thing is, I would argue that the things that we learn about this character through those additional scenes actually aren't new. All it really does is reinforce the stuff that we can basically just assume from the way he acts. So these extra scenes don't give us new insight, they just, give an explanation for what was already very obvious on the surface. And I think for what we get out of that, it was time that didn't need to be spent on him. I'd say there's probably between five and 10 minutes that can just be dropped from the movie just by dropping these extraneous scenes because his performance is good enough that you get, you get this guy pretty much immediately and the extra scenes don't add much. That is, I think literally my only complained about this movie. It, and I really do want to emphasize this, it is touching to me. I, I, I cried. I cried at two points in this movie. Um, and I'll tell you about one of those points because I mean, it, I, I can talk about this without it getting too much into spoilers because it was about halfway into the movie. And obviously Sally Hawkins develops a pretty strong bond with this fish man. And she is explaining through sign um, to Richard Jenkins why, you know, what is the root of this bond? And what she says to him is, when he looks at me, he doesn't know that I can't speak. He doesn't know that I am incomplete. He only sees me and not what I'm missing. And there's that and there's a, and there's another line she has um, like maybe only 30 seconds later that was also a beautiful line, but that, the strength of that connection. And ultimately I think that's, that's why I keep coming back to this is a beautiful movie and not just visually because I think it, it really, it speaks to people who go through a good chunk of their lives and there's something about them that either they themselves or their family or society in general would deem as wrong, as a defect. And usually when, when something like that is an apparent thing, it's, it's something that you always feel like is the first thing people see about you. 
So she and that moment do such a wonderful job of conveying the strength of feeling when you encounter somebody who doesn't see that defect, who either doesn't see it at all or doesn't see it as a problem. And I think it ha it's it has a really powerful message that can speak to any number of people, whether it be people who are physically disabled, people who, um, you know, are are part of the LGBTQ community, people who just feel like there's something wrong with me, no one will ever get me. Her power and the emotionality of her performance throughout the movie, but especially in that moment, encapsulates the power of finding someone who gets you when you literally did not believe that such a thing was possible. And it is beautiful. And it's not just a beautiful moment, it holds throughout the film. I, like I said, I do think this is my favorite Guillermo del Toro movie. I was enraptured. I was moved. I was stunned. I sat through the credits, not because I expected there to be some kind of bonus scene or anything at the end, but because I didn't, I didn't want to leave. I did, I did not want the lights to come up. I didn't want the experience to be over. And I have a feeling that when the end of the year comes around, I might cheat and put this on my consideration for best movies of 2018. Yes, I know it came out in, in 2017, but it came out at the end of December. It was in limited release. So the only people who saw it in December were professional critics and people who live in New York and LA. For everybody else, for all intents and purposes, this is a 2018 movie. This, I, I'm gonna have to recognize this thing again when the end of the year comes around. And if I don't, then it has been an astonishing year at the movies. So, The Shape of Water, those are my thoughts. I love this. Absolutely love it. Have you seen it? What do you think about it? If you haven't seen it, what's your favorite Guillermo del Toro movie and why? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Do all the stuff! You know, the likes and subscribes and Twitter follows and Patreon support, maybe? Hey, it's an option. All that stuff has got links down below. So until next time, this council is adjourned.